I'd like to introduce our platform. Uh, it says platform person. We know that this is Jeanette, our prayer chaplain, who will light the Christ candle and carry forward with the service. Thank you, Annie. Now, um, take a moment here. I'm going to light the Christ candle. This symbolically reminds us of the light that is within each one of us, the light of truth, the light of love, the light of goodness. If you'd like to take a moment to just relax, take a deep breath and close your eyes, I'm going to read the daily word for today, which is Sunday, September 9th, 2018. The theme for this prayer is creative process. I am a divine expression of infinite creative energy. I am that. Symbolically, the seven days of creation described in the Bible correspond to the seven stages of the creative process. The book of Genesis also shares that humankind was created in the image of God. It stands to reason then that I must be an expression of the same divine energy and essence, essential part of this creative process. As such, we birth divine ideas into tangible expressions in this mortal experience. The creative process is sparked at times by a vague restlessness or a dissatisfaction with that which is. Ideas become manifest and they're shared and clarity begins to take shape when we surrender to this process and we affirm I am a divine expression of infinite creative energy. And from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, so God created humankind in his image, and in the image of God he created them, male and female, and he created them. Amen. Now I'd like to um, invite you to join with the band to sing the Lord's Prayer followed by Aubrey Lynn's um, meditation. Today, trip it, take a journey with me. We're going to go into an arbor. See many trees there.
There could be the tree of life, the tree of wisdom, the tree of knowledge. Before you enter, there are many baskets, some small, some medium, some large. Which one will you take? As you enter, past the tree of wisdom, knowledge, <coughs> life, there's a money tree. There's also a wellness tree, a love tree, a healing tree. And as you make this choice, search your heart and soul. With all these choices, what will fill you the most? Did you pick the right size basket? Are you taking a little from each tree? Or are you drawn to the one that fills most of your needs in this very moment? Are you feeling filled? Is the tree of happiness calling you? Or the tree of life, the first one? Life. you start to come back with your basket, perhaps a little full, perhaps overflowing, bring back with you that which is your heart's desire. with me as you enter back into this sacred space, that whatever it is, it is there for you, it is possible, it is all good, and it is all God.
When I was thinking about the word abundance, I heard the word dance jump out at me. Now, what most of you don't know is in my day, my friends called me the dancing queen. In fact, on one of my birthdays, my friends gathered together at a nice luncheon, and they gave me two gifts. One was a little hamster that wound up and sang the dancing queen. And the other one was a nun. And she wound up and did some kind of blessing thing. So this is how my friends see all sides of me. But when I think about how we all dance around this issue of prosperity and giving and receiving, I realize it is, an, it is definitely a dance. It's an abundance dance. You're supposed to laugh more there. That was funny. <laughs> Thank you. OK, you just blew my whole opening. <laughs> uh, could we now, uh, Leanne, could we have laugh cards up here for the future? <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so that didn't work. I won't try that one again. So anyhow, so if we could get ourselves seriously, though, if we could get ourselves out of our way and have fun with this concept of prosperity, we can see that life in itself is so abundantly rich. So what is money, anyhow? It's energy, God in action, an exchange for goods. If everything is energy and everything is God then money is just part of this divine flow of abundance from God. It's all good. It's all God. That's all it is. See, there's no big secret to unlimited prosper prosperity. Catherine Ponder, in her book, The Secret of Unlimited Prosperity, states this. God is the source of man's supply. God has provided many channels through which riches of the universe can flow. Riches of the universe can flow. And Moses reminded the Hebrews of this when he said, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives the power to get wealth. We circulate all around trying to figure out the how, the why, what should I do, the classes, the, all the things that might give us extra income. But Moses said, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to wealth. There's much confusion regarding money because of the quote, money is the root of all evil. And however, money is not the root of all evil. It's the what? Love. The love of money that's the root of all evil. And I'm here to tell you there is nothing virtuous about poverty. Poverty will not get you into heaven any quicker than being rich. If there's a key to uh, getting to heaven regarding prosperity, I believe it would be how freely we give, how openly we receive, and then circulate back out. There has to be a continuum. If you want that which is good to come in, then that which is good from within you must go out. Now, Charles Fillmore, uh, our co-founder, shocked the religious uh, community when he said, it's a sin to be poor. That's our founder. He said, but of course, what he was saying about is the fact that in poverty, we're using the power that's given to us by God, but we're not using it for our good. Does that make sense? Okay. In the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus makes it clear that when you know your true identity, know who you are. Who are we? Beloved children of the one God. When we know that, you realize that you're one with the living God. And to emphasize that truth, man's consciousness of the presence within constitute his supply. Jesus said, but if you will know yourself, know yourself, then you can dwell and you then dwell in poverty and it's you that's the poverty. So he's saying that no matter what we believe inside of us, we're impoverished, we're spiritually bankrupt if we don't open up to all the good that is coming towards us. So God is the giver and the gift and we are the receiver. God is the giver, the gift, we're the receiver. 
What happens though sometimes is that we take in a lot and then we hold on to and we don't let go. You know, sometimes when people come in my house and they like something, I say, take it because I know it needs to go. I remember one time with one of my aunts, I love her beveled sugar and creamer. And I said, oh my God, I love that. And my aunt opened the china closet and gave it to me, which is still in my house. There needs to be a constant movement, a constant flow. And that's not about money. It's about all things in our life. Emerson tells us that we're born to be rich, or listen to what he says, or become rich by the use of our faculties, by the union of thought and nature together. He says any person who is experienced in lack is in some way living in opposite to the universal flow. So there is a flow that comes in and then it goes out and circulates and come back. It makes a complete circle all the time. It's about having the consciousness. We use that word a lot. Consciousness that attracts all you require to fulfill your wishes and dreams. You know, when I was first in New Thought, I got so sick of people <laughs> saying, what's in your consciousness? What's in your consciousness? And it is annoying. It is, don't say that to your friends. It is annoying. But it is the truth. <laughs> what is in your consciousness? Because your consciousness attracts all that you have in your life right here and right now. And that's a tough one because then we have to sit and look at ourselves in a mirror and go, what is in my consciousness? Where am I? Eric Butterworth taught that, uh, taught that. He said that when we establish ourselves in the consciousness of God, establish yourself in the consciousness of God, the whole universe moves for you to give you substance and abundance. Butterworth says there is nothing that can keep you from your good but yourself. Perhaps this is what Jesus meant when he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all these things shall follow as well. Now this doesn't mean that God is going to pour down money from the sky and pay all your bills. <laughs> I wish, but that's not what it means. It means that if you're open and receptive, are you open and receptive in your relationship to the power of God? We all know this. There's nothing new that I'm saying. I, I just have the ability to say it. But God can only give to you what you believe you're worth. God can only give to you. Remember the story last week or the week before? I don't remember what. I think it was last week. But I remember the story about the, the day workers. And they used to want $5 an hour. And then they had $10 an hour. They knew their worth. They stood up for what they believed. So God can only give you what you believe you are worth. And we are all worth so much more than we give ourselves credit for. We are all such divine people. We need to get back to that, that prosperity within that gives the love back out. But money is only part of the equation. Today, when, when you went into meditation and you had all of these choices of what you could possibly, possibly pick and put in your uh, baskets. So I have a workshop that... Uh, I, trying, there's so many I want to do, this time runs out, but there's a workshop that I call that's Light Your Way to Prosperity, and it's a beautiful, it's all done with candles, it's just an exquisite workshop, and in the beginning, and all the candles have a different color, the big candles, all the way across the long table, and then they each have a thing that says love, health, wealth, money, blah, 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 and the colors kind of correspond, and when you begin this workshop, you write down what you want. And half of them are usually money. Half of them are usually money. And then we go through this workshop of lighting your way to prosperity. And by the time it's done, I ask people before, and I give everybody a little candle of their color of choice, ask them to now write down what they want to take with them. 
and 99% of the time, over half of the people change from money to something else. And that was the part of the, of the basket. What is it? Yeah, of course, we, most of us, I think, could all use some extra money. I know I have things hanging on my head I'd like to pay off, and I'm sure that we do. And, but what do I want more? Happy talk. We want happy talk. I was singing it at 3 a.m. this morning, and at 5 a.m., and at 7 a.m., and I came in with happy talk. So it's more about that. There are things that we desire that have nothing to do with money, absolutely nothing. Health, our children growing up well, our community prospering, our church growing. There's so many other things. Our parents living longer, cures for diseases. There are so many things that we could ask for or affirm that's possible besides money. How many of you would like more love in your life? Anybody? Yeah, I see heads. Yeah, I see hands going up. How about better health? How many of you would like better health? Yeah, me too. More free time. Yeah, okay. All of these things, whatever's on your list about prosperity, these aren't about money. So here's some questions. Are you rich in spirit? Or are you spiritually bankrupt? I think this is the key, spiritually bankrupt, rich in spirit. If, if there were an arch here, where would you be? Rich in spirit, spiritually bankrupt. Where are we? Where am I? Do you have a generous heart? Do you have a forgiving heart? Do you have an abundance of compassion? Do you care about the people that do not care for you? That's a hard one. Do you care about the people that don't care for you? And I will tell you that that is important because I have a prayer book and I write prayers every morning. And most of my prayers are for the people that I think don't care for me. Those are what my prayers are for. I don't have to pray for the people who love me because I know they love me. I don't have to pray for the people I love because I know I love them. But do we pray and do we put out a healing energy? And it doesn't mean you're going to get along or it doesn't mean you're going to become best friends, but it means everybody has the right to be. They may not have to come to my house for lunch, but they have the right to be. That's generous in spirit. You see, prosperity is spiritual well-being. And when you're in tune with who and what you are, you're rich indeed. Some people are happy together with their eight or nine kids in a small house, and their kids are healthy and happy and doing well in school, and they have family all around them, and they big holidays, and they bring in chairs or wooden planks and make room around the table. They're happy. They're happy. The word prosperity, do you know where it even comes from? you know what it literally means? It means according to hope or to go forward hopefully. So it's not about having. It's about an attitude towards life. So what is your attitude towards life? What do you believe is your birthright? What do you believe you're worth? I love what Eric Butterworth says in Spiritual Economics. Prosperity is a way of living and thinking and not just about money and things. Would you agree with that? Yeah? Okay. You can speak louder. It's okay. Okay. So, but he also says, he also says poverty is a way of living and thinking and not just a lack of money or things. Prosperity is a way of living. Poverty is a way of living. Which do you choose? So what does this mean? It means that we have to change the way we think. Change your thinking, change your life. It sounds so easy, and no, it is not. I am here to tell you. I am a minister over 18 years, and it is not. Change your thinking, change your life. Guard the temple gates. That means what's coming into your mind, guard it. And at some times, just say, no, I can't accept that. You know, I spoke to somebody yesterday uh, from... Uh, from our congregation at length, 
and this person, I honored her because she, in essence, was saying, right now I am guarding my temple gates. I cannot take in any more. My life is too full, and it has confusion in it. And until I sort that out, I need to step away. It is not about a situation. It is not about a thing. It is about the person taking care of themselves. And this is to be honored. It is not to be talked about. It is to be honored. Because we can only demonstrate at the level of our belief. You know, people keep saying, well, I'm wanting and I'm wanting and I'm wanting. And what does the universe say about that? You keep what? Wanting, absolutely, because the universe always says yes. God always says yes. What you put out there says yes. So if you're saying, I'm wanting, I'm wanting, I'm wanting a new job, I'm wanting a new job, and the universe gives you, fills your subjective mind, and you keep wanting. When you change that and you say, I know, I know right here and right now that the job that I am seeking is already in its way and it is on my way to me and I know that I will see it and know it and open up and accept it. See the difference between I want a job, I want a job, I want a job in knowing that it's out there? The universe says yes and this is what we don't understand about prosperity. Be it money, health, new relationships, whatever it is that you would like an abundance of. What is it you want an abundance of? I want abundance of love and peace and calm. Do what you love. The money will follow. Don't even worry about it. What about the people who think the world owes them a living? Do you know anybody like that? The people think the world... Butterworth says we need to know that the world most definitely does not owe you a living. But the universe does. Why? Because it only says yes. So it's important that we understand whatever we put out is reflected back to us. Some days you look in a mirror and you see a bright and shiny person and you feel, whoa, I know that person. And then other days you look in the mirror and what's reflecting back to you? And go, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this person? And it's me. It's me. There are a thousand affirmations you can declare. Now notice I didn't say, say. Declare, I know. If you start everything in your life with I am and I know, and it has a positive realm, then that will come to you. All things that you ever pray for, ask and believe, and you shall receive them. Do we just give lip service to these things, or do we believe it? Do we believe it? I know without a doubt that the waters are calming, the sea is rising, and we are going to be blessed with growth, family, and children. I know this. I knew this before I came here which is why I came here, and I know it still. The master teacher, 2018 years ago, he gave the answers that we're just beginning to realize. We're just beginning to understand what Jesus was about. And it's an amazing thing that this power, this power that brings everything of lack and limitation in your life is the same exact power that brings you love and prosperity. It's the same thing. You see, it is a dance because it's a circle and it goes round and round. And no, I'm not dancing again for you because you didn't laugh. So, <laughs> Your goal in life is not to get more things. It's to open up the floodgates. So did you take a little basket and you're just going to take a little life and a little money and, and a little good health and, and maybe some happiness? Or did you take something? You know, it's, please, sir, can I have some more? Or please, sir, can I have some more? Because I need to share it. I need to put it out there. The more I get, the more I give. It's easy to tithe 10 cents on a dollar. It's even easy to tithe... $10 on $100, but what happens when it gets way up there? You want me to give that much? Yeah, 
I do. I will. I do. So that wasn't in here either. It just came out. Thank God. Okay. So, my friends, we're not made to be poor and unloved. Ugh. We are created in the image and likeness of God, and that is love, light, peace, harmony, beauty, joy, wisdom. Money alone will not make us happy. How many rich people do you know that are not happy? <laughs> I won't even go where I was going to go there. Okay. <laughs> I'm not? Not the place. So prosperity consciousness is freedom. Freedom, the freedom to live your life the way you choose. That's for in my life. Uh, I want to have the money to buy a friend flowers when I want, take a friend to dinner when I want. I want to have enough money to go to the theater with Monica and Vita and see Abba. I have a dream. And uh, I want to be able to do the things I want and pay my bills, pay my bills on time. I want to be able to always, without even thinking, tithe back to where I get my good. That's all. I don't want to be a millionaire. Yeah, if I win the lottery tomorrow, what would I do? I think the board asked me that when uh, I interviewed here, by the way. Um, I told I about build a bigger church, pay off my daughter's student loans. There's a whole bunch of things. I have a list of friends that have had heartache in their life, and I have a list so that I don't forget when I win the lottery. And I have down 10,000, 5,000, 10,000, 5,000. Build a new church, pay for this damn carpet. <laughs> okay, money rising. <laughs> Did I say that? Whatever. But do you see? <laughs> And I'm not going to leave. I will need some time off. There will be a little bit of cosmetic work done, but just a little. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm staying, OK? But do, you, but do you know? What would you do? Would you blow it all on trips and cars and fancy houses? Nah. Let your mind flow. Let it flow with creative ideas, joy, love. Take time. Take time to be still. Listen. Spirit, God, upper management will always lead you in the right direction. I know that. Know that you're in do, indeed a beloved God, child of God. God loves you. It is your birthright to be prosperous, to be healthy, to be abundant. You know, mental discipline is much harder than physical discipline. But we can do it. What you're feeling right now, take that with you. Take that out with you into this week. And think about each thing. I know people who won't pick up a penny off the street because it's not enough money. Pick up the penny off the street. Even if you give it to one of those things, you know, to feed the children, take care of animals, pick up the penny off the street. My sister, one of them in Colorado, is not very wealthy at all, poor. But if she finds a dollar, she will put a dime in anything on a countertop. She still has the consciousness. And she lives her life in Colorado in the mountains, and that's what she chooses, and she likes it. But she still has the consciousness. So let us today really literally think about when we leave here, what is my thoughts about money? What am I thinking? What is my thoughts about prosperity? What am I caring about? And I'm going to ask you, can we start, will we start with a generous heart? And so ends this lesson, and so begins a very new moment. And so it is.